In this episode of Locked On Capitals, we talk Martin Faravari and his impact on the team, and also what he's been up to since the Capitals season ended. And then we're going to talk about this aging Capitals roster. Where do they move from here? Do they need to make any big changes, or are they going to stand pat with what they have? We'll talk about all of that and more next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form. So head on over to YouTube and check that out. My name is Dan Holman. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So that's where we're going to start off tonight is talking about Martin Fari and uh, his impact to this team. You know, he had a really kind of breakout season, I would say, with the Washington Capitals. Um, And he's been up to some big things uh, since the season ended. Martin Faravari scores a goal in Slovakia's 4-3 victory over Kazakhstan at the World Champions. So, you know, with a capital season ending, it just seemed like he uh, decided to go home and uh, play for his home team. And uh, good on him for doing that. Uh, You know, it kind of probably helps his chops, you know, keeping in uh, in sync with things. And I think that you might uh, see some improvement in his game. You know, anytime in those situations where you can get some more reps out there, especially when you're, you know, a younger player trying to kind of make your way through uh, the NHL and trying to get used to things, I I, I can't help, help but think that that's only going to help his game. Uh, and it looks like he, he's been off to a great start there. The NHL's top rookie goal-scoring defenseman from this past season has struck for his country in the 2022 world champion. Martin Faravari got on the board for Slovakia's in Group A play as they took down Kazakhstan 4-3. The young Slovak scored the fourth goal of the game to bring his team level two to two. They would go on to score two more in a quick succession and take home the victory. And uh, this story in Russian machine never breaks. You know, this the thing about Martin, Martin Faravari is that he should have really had his opportunity the year before. But as you know, they had Char on the team. You know, in a little bit of hindsight, 2020, looking back on that, they would have probably been better suited um, having uh, Martin Faravari out there. He's a better offensive defenseman. He's a better defenseman. He's got more wheels. And he, his physical game, um, I would say, is, was better than Char's. And I know that Char ha- had this big reputation as being a tough guy out there. But I think that Martin Faravari can hold his own out there as well. And uh, I think that he has a bright future with this Washington Capitals team. And I think that we're just kind of starting to see just the, the very beginning of his potential. Uh, Martin Faravari, uh, six foot two, 202 pounds, shoots left. Um, current salary, $750,000. He was drafted in the second round, 46th overall in the 2018 NHL entry draft and our entry level contract there. And I, like I say, I think that, you know, things are going to continue to grow and grow for Martin Faravari. Uh, if you take a look at this Washington Capitals team and kind of the direction that they want to go in, they want to go younger and quicker. And I think that uh, that plays to Martin Faravari's strengths. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing that I want them to do, the Washington Capitals and Martin Faravari, is to really kind of develop the players that they have in-house Um, You don't need to always go shaking things up and bring in some other players. Just keep the players that you know on the team that are going to do really well. In this case, like your Martin Faravari, Hendricks LaPierre, uh, Connor McMichael, uh, Brett Leeson, uh, Protus, uh, those types of players. I think that you have a pretty good nucleus of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, younger players that I think will will help this Capitals team in the years to come because I think that it is a team that uh, is in transition and uh, that's what they need. They need these young players to kind of lead them through this next process because as we look, and we'll talk about that later in the show, about the aging roster in this Washington Capitals team, 
You know, it's no surprise there. It has an aging core and uh, that's what, that's what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to slowly integrate these, these younger players into the team. And they did that this year and uh, they're going to have to kind of up, you know, kick up the pace, step it up as they would say, uh, because, you know, with that first round exit that the Capitals faced this year, we really don't want to go into next year uh, and the postseason next year, you know, fingers crossed that they make it to the postseason next year with another first round exit. If that is in fact the case, I think, you know, you will see some big changes taking place. And I am a firm believer that you probably will see big changes taking place this off season as well. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. Martin Faravari, those kind of players, those guys that have some big upswing. And I think that Fer- Faravari is one of them. Faravari flew over to Finland to play in the tournament after the Capitals were eliminated, eliminated, excuse me, in game six by the Florida Panthers. His first game came on Wednesday in a five to three Slovakia loss to Switzerland. Much like his time in DC, he is playing on the de facto first defense pairing and kind of just him stepping up to in a big role with the Capitals, even on his home team there. Um, Just a lot of, um, you know, trust bestowed upon him. And I think that he's made good on that. I don't really think of any glaring uh, mistakes that Faravari made in this past season, but like I think, like I said, I think that he has a really great upward trajectory and I see good things from him. In Wednesday's game, Faravari led all skaters on both teams in ice time by a long shot as he skated just barely under 26 minutes and still managed to come out a plus one, even though his team had scored five times. In Friday's game, he again led all Slovak defensemen in ice time, 20 minutes, 44 seconds, and was only bested overall by future 2022 top draft pick selection. Um, I'm going to have a tough with that. Zherzhov Slazvaski. This is his third world championship as he participated previously in both the 2018 and 2019 tournaments. At the 2019 tournament, he was named the fastest freshman reaching a top speed of, get this guys, 37.9 kilometers per hour or 23.6 miles per hour on ice. He beat out current NHLers. Uh, Kapo Kako, Nico Hishir, um, Texier, and Henry Yuraku. So if you just take a look at his speed out there, um, you know, that's one of the big things too, is that these younger players, that's what it's all about. It's good about going younger and quicker. And, uh, you know, just looking at those stats, that is crazy to me to think how fast that he's skating 23.6 miles per hour. That is flying on a pair of skates. I got to tell you. Next season in the NHL, Faravari enters his final year of his entry-level contract, which averages 791667 per season, which is a pretty friendly deal to the Washington Capitals. Now, you got to think that uh, Faravari will be due for a raise, um, and I most, you know, of course he will, and I think he deserves it uh, based on his play. And I think that, uh, like I say, I think that he deserves that. And, uh, you know, that's what you need. You need to keep these young players in-house and develop them. And I think they did a pretty good job with that. Some of the players though, I kind of wonder, you know, the guys that got a little bit more limited ice time. I know that <clears throat> Connor McMichael, for example, I sometimes wonder if he wouldn't have been better suited to spend more time uh, in Hershey, especially he had stretches throughout the season where he was a healthy scratch. Um, but, you know, I think that next year will probably be a lot different for the likes of Connor McMichael and Faravari. And probably, you know, you might, uh, there's a chance of seeing Hendricks LaPierre stepping up. You don't know. Um, at least I would say plan on seeing him in Hershey next year. And uh, I think that there's just a real good group of uh, Washington Capitals players that are are going to be coming up soon. Uh, as we talked about in the other episode there, you know, you take a look at the RFAs, you take a look at... Um, even in the net minding, Ilya Samsonov and Vitek Vanacek, I think you're going to see a lot of change there as well. And, uh, you know, is there a chance that you could see Zach Fukali or you could see Hunter Shepard step up into one of those bigger roles? I think it's definitely possible. Um, I think a lot will end up being determined on uh, what ends up happening in the training camp in the fall. But, you know, there are some big changes that are going to be taking place for the Washington Capitals. There is no doubt about that. Um, And we'll talk a little bit more here about um, 
Martin Faravari and the, just some of the different uh, young players that are coming up. You know, this is the off season, so we can kind of really kind of take the face off the clock and look at the gears and see how is this Washington Capitals team playing? Are they playing the best that they could possibly play? Are there any improvements? The off season, this is a time to kind of take a look at this with more of a fine tooth comb. I know in this regular season where it's constant game breakdown and that kind of thing, but now let's kind of just kind of focus in a little bit more um, on some of the different players. And we'll talk a little bit more about that after the break. But first, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your confusion for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen. For your next listen, check out Locked On Now podcasts, nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right. So just to continue here and just talk, you know, a little bit more in depth about some of the the younger players in the previous podcast, I talked about Connor McMichael and where does he fit into this Washington Capitals team? And I think that it is pretty well decided that he does have a bright future uh, with the Washington Capitals. So that's what we're going to kind of do is just go over some of these younger players that uh, were introduced this year and how did they perform? Do they have a role on this team? And, uh, you know, uh, some of the younger players that have kind of bounced up and down between AHL and NHL, there's a little bit more uncertainty there. But as far as Martin Faravari is concerned, I think that his spot with the Washington Capitals is secure. I mean, I don't think that there's any issue with his play and that just a kind of a really standout um, season for him. I think that he kind of, like I said, solidified his spot on the team. And, uh, you know, just doing some big things, you know, even outside of the NHL season where he is playing really great at the World Champions. And, you know, congratulations to him and Kempney also who was playing in that. And like I say, I think that, you know, he he has a real cap friendly deal here. His cap hit is 791,667. That's only 1% of the team's cap space. Accumulated cap hit is 791,667. He is on year two of three of his contract. So those are the big things coming up for him. And uh, like I say, I think that there's nothing but good things coming up for him in the future. And uh, let's just, let's see what, what, what is next for him. I think that that's the biggest thing is you see a lot of these younger players that are slowly working their way up into the team. Um, who, who do you think that would be a good fit on this Capitals team next year? You know, you take a look at Protoss and Leeson and a lot of those guys, and you saw how they played. Um, do you think that they have starting roles for the Washington Capitals next year that's that's the big question i guess out there um because i mean at to a certain extent you don't really know what you have in house until you until you get these guys some more reps and you know we were talking about the net mining situation and you know it seems clear to me that they probably will make some moves um and pick up a veteran net miner but you know I don't think that it's necessarily Ilya Samsonov and Vitek Vanacek are a lock. I really don't. Um, and I, how I talked about in that previous podcast as well is that there are teams that are showing interest in them or, you know, they're kind of the the talking heads of the insiders are kind of placing them on certain teams. You know, they're like, well, maybe Samsonov and Vitek Vanacek, one of the two of those guys would be a good fit for one of the teams that maybe didn't have such great net minding. And that one example they talked about maybe with the New Jersey Devils. So that would be an interesting fit. So I, I just, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty that's kind of surrounding this team right now. Uh, anytime you make a first round exit, you're going to see, you know, some changes and especially this Washington Capitals team who has not made it past the first round since 2018. And then 2018, of course, they won the Stanley Cup, but you know, kind of just a really fall from grace. Uh, you can point to certain things and draw lines on why didn't the Capitals, why didn't they make another push for the playoffs? Why have they not won another Stanley Cup? And, you know, there are certain things that come to mind. You know, one of the biggest glaring things that kind of st- sticks out to me is Barry Trotz. You know, it's a lot of hindsight, 2020, looking in the rearview mirror. But at the time, I'd, I, they didn't want to pay Barry the money that that he wanted to get paid, and they ended up going with with Todd Reardon, and we all know how that went. It went quite horribly, to be honest with you. 
it's not always the case that these um, assistant coaches make great head coaches. And uh, I think that was really kind of exemplified when you saw Todd Reardon taken over as the head coach. And it really kind of remains to be seen how Lane Lambert, who is going to be the successor of uh, Barry Trotz. And, you know, the funny thing, you know, I've talked about with Barry Trotz is, is I don't know why he keeps getting this cold shoulder from all the teams around the NHL. You'd swear that he had a horrible record. But, you know, I think that, like I've said, I think that his, you know, the, those teams loss are going to be another team's gain. Uh, if you take a look at what teams are already showing interest in Barry Trotz. I've heard uh, the Winnipeg Jets in particular are really kind of kicking the tires on him. And that seems like kind of a likely fit for Barry, doesn't it? Because that is kind of where he's from. He's from that region. So I think that th that could be possible that Barry could go to Winnipeg. And if you take a look at that Winnipeg team, they could definitely use the help, you know, and just kind of taking a look at that team. People say, well, you know, if Barry goes to Winnipeg, that's not any big improvement over, the Islanders, well, I'm like, to that, I say, well, Barry didn't really have a choice. He was let go by the team. But I think that the Winnipeg Jets and Barry Trotz, they could kind of build a team um, around him. You know what I'm saying? I think that, you know, the, the lineup that was on the ice for Winnipeg this last season obviously was not the greatest. So I think if they did sign someone like Barry Trotz, I think that, you know, they'd probably pick up some pretty big names to kind of solidify that role. And there might even be certain stipulations that Barry Trotz has in place. Um, if he's even going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to sign on, even come over to that team. You know, he might say, you know, before I sign on the dotted line or electronically, however they do it nowadays, I want to see what kind of team is going to be in front of me. How are you going to take care of the net minding situation? How are you going to take care of, you know, the issue with forwards and defense? How are you going to take care of that? And most notably, who are my, uh, my assistant coaches going to be? So I think before Barry, you know, when you get to a point in Barry's career, you know, you can kind of call your own shots a little bit. It's not like he's this rookie coach, you know, that kind of has to say, yes, sir, no, sir. He can kind of, I mean, honestly, if you look at him, he could retire right now if he wanted to, but I don't think that's really in the cards for Barry. I think that he kind of wants to go out in, in his own terms. So I think that Winnipeg seems to be like a likely uh, landing spot for Barry. Otherwise, I've also heard names like Dal uh, the Dallas Stars or perhaps even the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, but to me, that just seems to be the likely fit. But there's there's so many different coaches that are going to end up being moved here and there. And, uh, you know, like I talked in the last podcast, it just, it's, it's it kind of a silly thing. If you think about it, it's just these, these teams that, uh, they keep, it's the, um, coaching carousel that they move from one team to another, to another. You don't really seem to get any traction that way until you kind of, you, you kind of see it through. And in case of the Washington Capitals, we were talking about Peter Laviolette and they were talking about what Brian McClellan said is, you know, like I'm going to keep those decisions, you know, kind of between management. Why not give an emphatic answer of, yes, he's coming back. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, you take a look at it from Peter Laviolette's point of view. He's probably like, what did I do here? You know, I got you guys to the first round, but you, you gave me nothing in net, really. You gave me these two unproven net minders. You know, I did what I could do. So I just don't think that, you know, that was maybe necessarily the most tactful way to respond to the question of, of, of uh, you know, Peter Laviolette's future in the presser there they were talking about. And, you know, we're just going to keep those those uh, answers but or the answer to that between us and management. You know, I, if I was, you know, more of a, a PR guy, I would have probably said, yeah, just go ahead and say, yeah, we're happy with him, you know. And if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. It just seems to be kind of an interesting um, response to that. So you, I do kind of wonder if they have something up their sleeve. I would be most surprised and kind of disappointed, uh, to be honest with you, if the Capitals parted ways with Peter Laviolette. But uh, I guess you never really know with these, <laughs> with what these, um, you know, general managers and ownership, I think, prob primarily are thinking. All right. After the break here, we are going to talk a little bit more about that aging roster for the Washington Capitals. Um, how many do you think of those players are coming back? Which going to move on. There's different blogs and publications out there that have their uh, viewpoints. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those after the break, but first we're going to talk a little bit about Built Bar and eating healthy. I love brownies, but you know what I love even more? Brownie batter. Sometimes I eat half the batter just while I'm making the brownies. I 
imagine if you could lick that brownie spatula clean and get some protein in? You're in luck because Build has a new creation, and this one is better than ever, the brownie batter puff. You heard me right, the puff that takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now at Build.com. Have you tried Build Puffs yet? I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Puffs are a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. That's right, delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% chocolate with 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams of sugar. Brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for any day. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means that with Built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. And they are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of healthy benefits. The brownie batter puffs have you completely forgetting that you'll be eating a protein bar. No need to pinch yourself. This is real life. So go to built.com right now to get brownie batter puffs. So what you need to do is go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. That's use promo code L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off at built.com. All right, in this final segment, we are going to talk a little bit more about, you know, that aging roster that the Washington Capitals are, you know, they have. That's what they're working with. And, uh, you know, they don't really have any choice but to go with what they have. And, um, you know, you kind of saw, you knew what you were going to get. And, you know, if you even remember what Brian McClellan said, he didn't have any real super high hopes for this team. And, uh, And when you take a look at it, you know, if your general manager is kind of, you know, kind of, so so on your future that isn't really kind of a good harbinger of of things to come for your team the immediate rea- reality is the capitals have an aging core and a top heavy salary cap both of which make the retooling that's needed burdensome alex ovechkin though he's completed a 50 goal season will be 37 this fall and nicholas backstrom turns 35 in november could potentially opt for hip surgery this summer and that's the most worrisome thing here. This is 1067, the fan article here, is is if uh, Nicholas Backstrom ultimately does decide to take that hip surgery, because if you know any other players that have had that surgery, um, it is a lengthy recovery. And you got to think about it from Backstrom's point of view. He's going to be 35 years old. If you're going to take all that time to rehabilitate, um, do you really want to come back to hockey and risk getting injured again? Now, it's a kind of a scary scenario for me to picture this Washington Capitals team without Nick Backstrom. But, you know, you got it's a little bit about self-preservation as well, to be honest with you. And if you take a look at Nick Backstrom, you know, he's, he obviously suffered a pretty major injury. And I think that there is a possibility that he doesn't come back. I'd like to think that he would. You know, most of these NHL players, uh, you know, have quite a bit of pride, so they don't want to think that an injury is going to get get them down. Together, their own eighteen point seven million against the cap next season, and that's to say nothing of John Carlson and TJ Oshie's combined thirteen point seven five million hit against the cap. Carlson is thirty two years old, and Oshie is thirty five. If Kenny Kuznetsov, who turns 30 in two days is owed 7.8 million against the cap next season. All told that accounts for 40.25 million. And uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm talking about when I've, when I've been talking in these podcasts about going younger and different players is just that the, this veteran laden team, this aging roster is getting paid, you know, just in these examples here, $40.25 million. Um, so those are things to consider. And those are some tough questions that Washington, the Washington Capitals, primarily Brian McClellan, um, Ted Leonsis, and Dick Patrick. All those guys are going to have some tough decisions to make because it's not just going to be the GM. They're going to have some tough decisions to make. Are you going to bring back, you know, like John Carlson and TJ Oshie and and the likes of that? And, you know, it will uh, Nick Backstrom opt to come back? You just wonder what's next for this Capitals team. It's four years to uh, four first round exits, two different coaches, same outcome. Obviously the first two years with Todd Reardon after winning the Stanley cup and the last two years with coach Peter Laviolette, they appear to be an aging team. They don't appear said Avil. They're the oldest team in the league. They have a lot of retooling to do. And it's kind of known league wide that the capitals, you know, it's no secret to anyone that they're an aging team and they need to make changes. And I think that they will make those changes, but you know, I hope that the, <laughs> I hope they make the right decisions, I guess, is the biggest thing, because you take a look at the Nationals and what they're going through right now. Not exactly a smooth running machine, I've got to say, over there. It's kind of 
a painful process they're going through right now. It seems that, uh, you know, even Juan Soto as of right now is in a bit of a slump. And it seems like Caber Ruiz is one of the bright spots in the lineup right now and maybe bump him up in the lineup. But that's what I'm talking about is that you take a look at these teams and you take a look at rebuilds and hopefully they go well. You take a look at the New York Rangers. It went pretty flawlessly. Hopefully if the Capitals do it the right way, it's not, you know, this multi-year rebuild process. Since, since winning the Stanley Cup in 2018, the Caps have suffered first-round exits from the Hurricanes, Islanders, Bruins, and now the Panthers, respectively. Is that true, asked Eric Bickle. They're statistically the oldest team. The oldest team in the league, Avel said, so they have to bring in some youth, obviously, to augment the core. Ovi, Nikki, Tom Wilson, hopefully... His knee injury isn't too severe, and that's another thing. Tom Wilson, who is not an older player, but we really hope that, you know, it's nothing major needed there. But that's what keeps coming out of the playoffs. It has to worry you, said Nick Backstrom, has come out and said, my hip's never going to be 100%. I mean, that's got to be alarming. We knew he was banged up. We knew that that was an issue coming into the season, but it's apparently something that's lingered throughout the season and will now linger through the rest of his career by the sound of it. And uh, that's a bit worrisome, you know, and those are some tough questions for Nick Backstrom to answer. Did he say what it is, Bickle said? It is just a degenerative thing. Uh, He didn't say anything specific, but it just alarms you that something that he's going to have to deal with as an older player. And he's on the hook for almost $20 million for the next two years, said Bishop. That's the problem. See, it's a very top-heavy team when you have to look at the payroll because Ovi, Backstrom, Carlson, Oshin, Kuznetsov are all booked through 2024, at least 2024. And that's $41 million that they're going to have to make each year. And, uh, and I'm not sure of Tom Wilson's contract status, Avel said. Wilson's got one more year, I think, said Bishop, and so does Anthony Mantha. And, you know, obviously there's certain players on that team, I think, that are untouchable. And, you know, Tom Wilson definitely falls under that category. So you can kind of just scrub his name off there. You're going to have to pay that that guy, Avil said of Wilson. So there's just that they're in a spot, man. Bishop said they're in a pickle. Um, and the article is... Um, like I say, this is 106.7, the fan, they were talking about that. And, you know, it's kind of something that's been talked about all over the place, this aging roster. What are they going to do? Um, they have to retool, they have to rebuild, and hopefully it's not too painful. Um, you know, I mean, just some of those, it would just be hard for me to imagine this team, you know, without Nick Backstrom on it, or, you know, God forbid, someone like Tom Wilson or Alex Ovechkin, John Carlson, something like that. So, but that's what I'm talking about. That's what the Capitals are facing. That's what their fan base is facing. It's just a kind of a, a difficult thing to stomach, but uh, the Capitals fans and the Washington Capitals will persevere and they'll come through this, you know, come hell or high water. Changes are coming. You know, I don't know exactly when or the the extent of it. You know, you hear um, Brian McClellan and Ted Leonza saying retooling. They don't want to use the, the word rebuild. And I think that's due primarily because of the promises that were made to Alex Ovechkin. Uh, that he would be on a, a competing team. And, you know, he can't be on a competing team uh, if you're playing with with nobody, really, essentially. You know, I hate to keep bringing drawing lines to the Washington Nationals, but look at them. That went poorly. And last I checked, they were in last place, and they're not getting a lot better. So, the, you know, the, the players that were doing better on that team are playing poorly. You take a look at Bell. You take a look at Soto, who can't figure out what's going on with him. He's admitted as much. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know how to fix it. So, I mean, there's problems that abound for these two Washington teams. But in this podcast, we're talking about the Capitals. And, uh, you know, hopefully they don't have to go through a process like that. You know, hopefully they can bring back the players that they need and part with the ones that they feel like they don't need and maybe pick up some assets, some younger players. Something, you know, kind of a blueprint that the New York Rangers did. Because like I say, I think they did a pretty good job uh, with what they did on that team. And um, going forward. Let's hope for better, bigger and better things from the Washington Capitals. All right, now make your second listen. Locked on NHL from the first round matchups to each Stanley Cup kiss. Locked on NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked on Capitals.